pleasure of welcoming Ivan to give a presentation here. And since I don't know him so well, he <laughs> present himself. So, hi everybody. Uh, I have a lot of things to say, and I really speak English not so far as so fast as Robert Watson does. So I'll try to to do my best. Uh, a quick overview of what we will see this morning. Uh, quickly introduce uh, Netask and myself. Uh, explain you very quickly what we are doing, what we, how long we will live uh, on some other things uh, about our products. Uh, one of the most interesting parts, I hope, will be uh, how to build and maintain an appliance firmware uh, which used uh, some parts of open source. And uh, the last but not the least, uh, what, how can we work with open source software operating system, community and uh, other things. So, uh, what will not be in this talk, uh, no source code, uh, we should not see too much of the technical things. Uh, I won't be paying more if you buy each one an appliance, so that's not the subject today. Uh, and uh, we will try to avoid, to avoid tools. <laughs> so, who is Netask? Uh, we provide a UTIM appliance, so it's basically uh, an appliance uh, which uh, chips a firewall on a lot of other, other things. Uh, firewall means much more than uh, letting packets pass or block them regarding the uh, IP header. We do really much more things, but that's out of, uh, uh, that's out of topic today. We live and we work near Lille in France, so I may say a few slides like that. Uh, software uh, is developed by uh, our uh, research and development team, so uh, we also do uh, other design, but production is done by other companies. We, we sell uh, products, uh, mostly in the uh, European community. So who am I? Most, most important things are that. I am a member of the research and development team. I am uh, the VPN project manager, I work on IPSEC stack. I am also a uh, kind of pearl on shell guru for the task, uh, and I do other stuff. I became um, uh, one of the maintainers of IPSEC 2's project, I'll, I'll talk more uh, of that uh, later, which made me become a NetBSD developer since uh, IPSEC tools is, not, is hosted at NetBSD now. Uh, I also already did some uh, free basic contributions. Uh, we will talk about that also in uh, some slides. And uh, you can easily find more information about me on the uh, uh, internet. So, very, very quickly history. Uh, we live since uh, about 10 years. There were five people in the company at the beginning. The first product was called F10. We shipped uh, three uh, 10 megabytes interface, uh, 32 megabyte RAM, uh, a very whole free basic file system, uh, system operating system now, uh, stateless packet filtering for the very, very first version, and uh, already a graphical user interface. Ten years later, well, quite ten years later, we're still alive. That's uh, very important. Uh, most companies are not alive after such, uh, such uh, duration. We are about uh, 60, uh, 20 person uh, for research and development. Uh, we provide appliance for all, for the very low uh, and to the almost very high end. Uh, it's important to note that we provide the same security level for all products. Uh, our firmware is actually version 7, which is just chipped out a few uh, weeks, days ago. We still use a uh, quite old FreeBSD version. I'll explain that later. We will use a uh, sixth version in uh, next year. Well, we already work on that, but it will be available for our customers next year. We provide a lot of features. We'll see that uh, quickly. Uh, we sold about, well, lots of units last year. We are available in more than 30 countries, actually. What, uh, uh, what are our products today? Uh, we provide so products for the, from the very low end to the very high end. Uh, these slides come for an internal corporate overview. Uh, so you can see lots of uh, things at the, the left. We have uh, common criteria certifications. Uh, let's see just the very low product, the F25. 
which uh, ships uh, CPU which is quite not speed. Well, it's not for that. We which provide uh, two uh, internet interface, uh, not so much RAM and not so much memory, which is flash memory, which is that's it's important. Uh, this memory were quite uh, lower a few years ago for older version of products. Uh, 128 and 28 megabyte memory flash means uh, not so much space, quite slow. Flash memory is really slower than hard drives, uh, and we must limit write access to flash because uh, flash, dri uh, flash drives do not like uh, writing much more on, on them. Uh, F25 is like that, small, great. <laughs> The high-end uh, high product is uh, ships uh, two uh, CPUs at about the uh, uh, next version should use ship uh, four mega uh, gigahertz uh, CPUs, one gigabyte RAM, a uh, lot of uh, hard disk memory, uh, hard disk space, uh, up to 24 gigabit internet, uh, Ethernet interface. Thank you. And, uh, excuse me, but uh, I just came with a picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's another slide for our corporate overview. So, we provide a lot of features. Let's see some of them. So, we do firewalling and intrusion prevention system. That's not detection, that's prevention, that's not the same. Uh, we provide uh, plugins for some protocols which uh, do much more tests on packets. We provide uh, NAT, uh, VPN, which is maybe IPsec, SSL. We provide uh, LDAP, including server if needed. Uh, we provide PKE for some of our products. We provide a lot of other, lot of other things. I probably forgot some of them, but we provide a lot of things actually. Uh, what's running behind? So, that's the reason why I'm here. We provide, a, we're running a BSD system. Our marketing team calls it uh, NSBSD for NetAx Secure BSD. It's a free, B uh, it's a free BSD kernel, which about lots of kernel patches and a few user on one. We do not patch so much the user on file system, but we are doing heavy things on kernel. We also have about 10 megabytes of uh, NetAx source, which includes the binary libraries and our uh, intrusion prevention uh, system. Most of them are in the C, a few of them are in another language. Uh, about 30 con uh, things we call contribs, which uh, may be, uh, well, we'll see later. So uh, some of them are already patched. We'll see later the, uh, that a uh, lot of patch are not see there because they're already in the, in the project. So it's more important to remember that all almost all I just said is available on all products on the higher end but also on that one that's important we just have some few uh, IFDEF code to, to to tune things that are recommending the products mainly for memory usage so what are our constraints of course our first constraint in security Security of the code, security, uh, but we also have to secure our customer's network. We need uh, to do both. We have memory constraint for the allowance products. We must be fast, of course, but we still must secure uh, customer's networks. We must try to uh, root file system as less as possible, but still because the allowance products. We must keep as much as possible compatibility with older products, uh, but no, we do not support anymore in the 7 version the first products we sold uh, 10 years ago. And of course, we must provide new features uh, from time to time. Let's see what's more interesting for you. A few warnings. So uh, you may experience some things if you like to do some strange pipe with your shells. You may also experience some other things if you are not used with your editor. Uh, you may still have much more strange <laughs> things. Of hopefully that's not true anymore. Uh, and you may still have some other problems. 
uh, most of the of that things uh, have uh, good reasons to be except uh, that one uh, <laughs> The shell is uh, a BSD licensed shell which, which is uh, not uh, so fat and uh, the guy who made the choice uh, do not use uh, inline shell anymore. The editor is quite light and our customers don't, uh, most of our customers don't like uh, VI style and uh, of course uh, we have not so much memory space on low-end products so we just add space for one operating system. <laughs> Uh, forget everything you know about uh, network configuration on BSD system because you will actually do configure interface routing but you will not configure our uh, security engine which uh, will not let packet pass if it doesn't know they are allowed to. A lot of uh, other things you usually see on a BSD bus system are just not there. So, uh, File system mounts show uh, one thing uh, which is important that what file system is, is, is synchronous because one, we, we are not doing so much right, which we are trying to avoid that. And uh, I made a lot of years ago some heavy checks, well, just to do a lot of write and, and, and plug the power. Uh, and the, uh, for that kind of test, this is really much more reliable than soft updates. Uh, slash for slash system is on RAM because we need to do to modify a lot of things so as we don't not want them to be on the slash file system we put them uh, somewhere else and uh, for quite all products we have a hard drive so we can put logs directly on the on the product on the separate device uh, on the separate file system because this one can really not be synchronous uh, a few interesting things uh, on the file system. Don't worry, we have the copyright. Of course, we have a kernel, we can be compressed for uh, small products. Uh, we have a dedicated di directory when we put everything which is done by us. So uh, it includes a user, uh, well, administrator's configuration. Everything which is related to us, including binaries and how libraries, uh, and any file specific information. So, already talked about Rajva, which includes everything which needs to be uh, generated and changed frequently. So, uh, another thing that's interesting is uh, the still about the size. Uh, Update.tgz uh, includes everything needed to uh, create a new product or to update one. So, in it includes kernel, system, uh, our binaries, everything. Actually, uh, the tarball is less than 10 megabytes, which I guess is quite small. Uh, memory is a uh, disk is a, excuse me. So on uh, quite all product because uh, you won't be able to buy that anymore. But I still use it. Uh, you will see that on a basic system, we our, our disk usage is quite is, is quite light. We use less than 40 megabytes memory uh, disk. Excuse me. Um, this this size can be much more because if uh, administrators use uh, some some things like UL groups, you will need uh, to to put them somewhere, and it's quite heavy. Uh, Interiors has the same issue, and it's difficult to to have a good estimation of. Uh, Appliance configuration, it can be only, uh, it can be less than one megabyte. On my firewall, is really less than one megabyte. But if you, uh, if you admit that others want a lot of things, it can grow up very quickly. Uh, size of the root file system is model dependent. Uh, it is uh, one gigabyte for iron products and uh, really much less for low end products. Uh, of course, uh, we guess that, uh, well, we, we have the size on the high-end product, so we just use it. And uh, we also consider that uh, high-end products may have more, uh, more configuration, more hosts on uh, objects, more users in the database, more, uh, more everything. Uh, but the size of uh, our update table is almost the same for all products. We have various tables for various products, but they are almost all the same size. 
Uh, upgrading is, uh, is a tricky issue because uh, we can just do a binary update of the file system. Uh, configuration file specific information are on the partition so we do not have a, a binary image of the file system which is the same for each product we could have do that at the beginning it mm, it will have it would have some uh, advantage and, and drawbacks so, and actually that's not what I've been done at the beginning so we just have to, to do with that uh, it's safer to upgrade file while uh, doing a boot than uh, if we are uptime about if our uptime is about uh, some days or weeks. Mainly because during the boot we have uh, much less uh, open files. That's the main reason. Uh, <laughs> we have some issues with uh, customers <laughs> <laughs> uh, because uh, well, when things take time. Uh, the, the best uh, thing we can hope is that the product is not on the is not just near the administrator. If he has to to change to, to move to the the door next uh, a few a few meters late, uh, further, it's still dangerous. If uh, the product is on the data center a few <coughs> kilometers uh, in another place, products have a better chance to survive. Uh, too much time is really uh, customers dependent. So we need to do things as fast as possible. Uh, the solution we found uh, some time ago is to, to do things in uh, the various categories. So we have uh, a boot table, uh, an NSBSD, so now you know, all know that NSBSD also exists. I'll, do, I'll be at the, at the project status next year. Uh, and the firewall uh, table. Uh, which are actually not tarball, as are, uh, uh, are not uh, compressed by uh, gzip anymore. Uh, each one is written to disk and extracted, extracted only if needed. Well, needed, not the same on the, uh, already on the, uh, on the firewall. Boot, dot, boot tarball is extracted before reboot, of course, in it includes uh, the kernel. Other are extracted now by a uh, custom init process which uh, just uh, runs with PID1, which forks, because I liked that the PID1 do the less things as are possible. Uh, PID2 will do uh, all uh, update process, uh, then will uh, leave, then PID1 will, uh, will say, okay, uh, update is done. I uh, just replacing with the, with the standard in it, and we are continuing uh, things. The, that ensures that quite no file is open now, uh, but we experienced some other issue with that, we'll see that later. So, uh, an interesting part is well, how to do that. Of course, at the beginning, two guys, two, three later, it's quite easy to do things. Uh, a few features, but uh, that's, that's not in more right. So, what do we need? Uh, some things which, which are completely out of topic today, uh, but we need a repository for our work. An easy way to manage contributions, uh, an easy way to build our source, uh, everything, which includes also some uh, things that are not directly uh, code. We need an easy way to manage uh, patch kernels, uh, and uh, you saw that uh, patch uh, is not, uh, is really, uh, this is a good word, is really high, heavily patched. We need to get uh, minimal free this system, I'm talking about user and tools. And of course, we need one command to all them all. Uh, repository for our work. So uh, just we use Ceres for some years, which was good, which are the, the most important command uh, a repository needs. Uh, the main problem we had is that uh, commit per file, which was uh, quite uh, an issue. And we needed uh, to, to do some scripting to get the complete source because we, we needed some various repositories. We use uh, SVN now for uh, quite two years. Uh, one commit by feature, that's great. Uh, or by fix, of course. Uh, it's, it was easy to import CVS3, which is uh, quite important. It is easy for a CVS user to move to SVN, which use almost the same commands. Uh, there's an external feature I never understood anything about, but which seems to do the greatly some stuff. And uh, we still have the most important command for a repository system. 
we need an easy way to manage contributions. So, what do we need? We need to fetch, build, and clean contribs. We can install what we need by simple copies. We usually do not need everything which is, is, which is installed uh, is with, uh, contr in contributions. We need to be able to, co to update contribs mm, the most easily as possible. Uh, some contribs are parched, so uh, we must uh, deal with that. It must, uh, patch must be stored somewhere, and uh, of course they must be used by our, by our build process. We tried uh, uh, for one of two projects to have uh, our own copy of uh, patched source, but that's not a good solution because uh, it's easy to do, to do our work on that, but when we have to update the contrib, that's, very, uh, that's a very, very, very difficult uh, job to do. Uh, there's another solution. Uh, uh, such constraints are exactly the same as the one uh, Freebase support system uh, have. So they did a great job uh, dealing with that. We just uh, use that and we just use the Freebase support system to manage our contribs. Even for some contribs which do not have a, start, a standard FreeBSD uh, port. We, we just uh, create some new port for that. Uh, what about our own source? Well, for binaries and libraries, we need to build them uh, with various options and specification. We need to install them in a specific lo location we know. Uh, and uh, here are the coders. We, we like to compile again things only if th that is really needed. That's my file jobs. Unfortunate, unfortunately, there are a lot of uh, make file commands, of make commands, there are a lot of syntax of various make file styles, etc. <coughs> Once again, before doing uh, the stuff uh, for ourselves, we, we looked at uh, what exists and uh, we, we just use the BSD make file and the BSD.mk file, which uh, do a great stuff and which allow us to have small make files which do what we want and uh, which are easy to, to maintain. <coughs> we just need sim uh, a cross-platform make, we, we choose CMake uh, for some cross-platform works. So, we also have a very heavily patched kernel. What are our, our constraints? We need to build and clean it. We'll have to handle various kernel configuration files, but that's not a, a very big issue. We need to be able to upgrade kernel, f uh, kernel source uh, when we want, and it must be as easy as possible. And uh, once again, we have a uh, lot of patches. Uh, they must be stored somewhere. They must be used by our build process. Once again, having a home copy is not a good solution for exactly the same reason. And um, once again, Freebase support system is great for that. So for us, Freebase kernel is just a port, a contrib, like uh, almost like others, and it works well. Our, our patches are just in the system uh, slash uh, files uh, 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 directory. So we also need a minimal Freebase system. We only patch a few user and files, so actually we just apply this patch to the build host and we just copy them after. We, we can do that because we have only few patch. I guess we'll change that if, uh, if we have more patch. Uh, so we know what we need about binaries and libraries. Uh, binaries is quite easy to, to do, to deal with. But uh, for libraries, we have, uh, we have an issue. It's dangerous to forget an important library, of course. And it's not interesting for us to, to keep some things that's not really useful. So we have a script which check that, which check that we have all ne the needed libra libraries and which uh, deletes uh, those, those are who are not used. We generate a uh, tarball for those files. Uh, we keep the name on the MD5 uh, sum for each version, be, uh, so we are able to, to use the, the exact same one and ensure that it's uh, still a good tarball. We keep them for years because we must be able to build again the exact same version, uh, any version, we must be able to, to build them again. Actually, uh, the, this tarball is uh, less than 4 megabytes, so we just uh, take the really, really, really needed files. 
just one command to all them, um, them all. So we do. Uh, we have a just a shell script which uh, generate everything, which no uh, firmware revision we must uh, build, which, extra which extracts and build everything. It's important to keep a correct order for something, uh, which uh, well, which do uh, the world stuff. That's not the most important. Okay. Uh, well, I speak um, quite as fast as Swabber, in fact. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't knew that. So you're working with open source. That's the real reason why I'm here today, in fact. Uh, first question is, well, working with open source. Why? How? Third, very, very first question. Remember, our main constraint is security. The question which has been asked uh, more time is, do you really use open source for security? Of course, the basic answer is yes. But people want more information. Some, some wants to to have. Some some explanations to for for that. So, of course, lots of reports confirm that open source is secure. But some other confirm that uh, closed uh, close source projects are more secure. Well, that's not uh, an answer. And of course, people can also say that some open source program have an EVV vulnerability history. Some some open source program are not secure. That's true. That's just true. It's easy to also say to also find some closed source program which have the same issues. I have a theory that says that uh, if it is always easy to find some numbers which will be able to tell what you want. Uh, just take uh, Firefox versus uh, Explorer uh, vulnerab vulnerability reports. Uh, just change the year you you're looking at. Just change the way you you check vulnerabilities, and it will be easy to say that one or the other is more secure, or is less insecure. So, uh, we are Coda. We we try to find to find uh, some uh, Coda solutions, Coda answers. Uh, so that's what I did. Who knows uh, anything about C programming here? <laughs> So this is an open source program. This, this uh, that's said on uh, on the other. Uh, who already uh, saw the problem with uh, that program? <laughs> okay, for everybody. Okay, uh, there's a lot of stuff done here, but if you look very accurately, there is a security issue with that program. <laughs> um, then I wrote another program. That's another one. You can check the MD5 sum of the file. That's not the same. So that's a different program. <laughs> this program is not open source. That's written. And I have to kill everybody before the end of the conference. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, if you look accurately, this program also does a lot of stuff and also uh, includes a small vulnerability in it. So. That's the only answer I have for such questions. Uh, and in fact, my conclusion about security is that closing or open source is uh, not the real solution. Closing source can make things be a little, be a little more easy, but that doesn't change anything. If there is a security issue in the source, just changing the license in one way or the other will not change anything. So closing source is not more secure. Not even it's not less secure anymore. No, not uh, secure. Of, uh, security of the code just depend on developers. That's the only real answer uh, I found, and I think that's the only uh, real one which uh, which is really true. So now we know we can use open source projects, some open source project for 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 appliance. Third, first question, of course, does it provide what we want? Uh, sometimes the answer is no, but we could easily add them. Well, we have developers at Netask, we can do things. Sometimes it, it's more easy to start for, from scratch. Sometimes it's more easy to use another project, but sometimes it's more uh, easy or more, at least more interesting to, to take a project which is not what we want but, but which can be 
easily what we want. We can work on that. Uh, we also talked about uh, GPL style coding. I want, uh, and I told that I would uh, try to avoid trolls. But uh, of course, for such kind of appliance, uh, <coughs> licensing is very important. Uh, sometimes we just can use GPL style prog uh, program. Uh, at least it was true uh, before the GPL uh, version three. Uh, sometimes we just cannot. Uh, we have some uh, programs on which we are doing modification. Some modification cannot be sent back for various reasons. We'll see that later. And sometimes uh, GPL on the files on source header is just uh, good weather enough to not use that. I know that some other appliance manufacturers uh, do not consider such problems, but we are trying to be uh, license compliant. Of course, one of our questions is, is the, code, is the code stable enough? And of course, is it secure enough? Uh, once again, the answer can be no, but we can deal with that, we can change that. Sometimes the answer is no, we just have to, to do other things. How much would it, cost us, we, would it cost us to write from scratch? Sometimes the answer is uh, two days, okay, let's go. Sometimes the answer is uh, ten years, okay, let's do something else. And how much will it cost to use a third-party program? Because it's, uh, it's always a solution to. Uh, well, a little more information about how much. How much can be money, of course, but it also can be time. And time is money. How much will it cost to have the functionality we need? But also how much will it cost to maintain it over the time? Our clients do not want something today. They also want us to, to guarantee that if there is a problem tomorrow, uh, we will find a solution tomorrow, in the morning. How much will it cost to extend it? One day or the other, we'll have to extend it. We'll have to add things, we'll have to change things. I don't know what actually, but we'll have to do. And of course, if you are using third-party programs, Will he, what will he have to pay to the third party? So, uh, using FreeBSD, so we use a FreeBSD variant. I'm on time, that's great. <coughs> we made the great choice. Of course, I didn't have time to, to add more detail, but of course, that's just a good reason enough. Uh, as uh, George and the other said uh, a few minutes ago, uh, most, uh, most projects, most, uh, most appliance, tools, uh, phones, or, and I don't know what else, toasters, uh, use uh, Linux-based projects, uh, like kernels, and uh, I guess they, they'll have some problems uh, by, uh, caused by the GPL version 3. Some of them already had problems with previous version. We know that some of uh, some other products uh, had some problems, uh, had some issues with uh, GPL version 2, but uh, well, that, that was because uh, they were using it on, uh, in, at the same time telling that uh, no, Linux is bad, we, are, we use uh, our own software, but uh, that's, that was not true. Uh, the second version why we did the good choice is because uh, FreeBSD had uh, a good network stack. Uh, and it, 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 uh, it, that's true for years. Uh, NetGraph and MPD uh, stuff is also very interesting for some protocols. At the beginning, we could just uh, ship in with uh, IPF, uh, work on other things, and be able to quickly provide a product which could do a basic job. Well, uh, 10 years ago, it was the job. Now it wouldn't be so true, but we have been able to, pro to provide quickly uh, a working product for our customers. Our customers were, were able to buy it, so we were already were able to, to get money. And uh, well, Netask is not a foundation, it's a company. And uh, of course, uh, we need money uh, to work, to be alive, to, to be paid to work on, the, on such projects. So it was very interesting and we had no problem 
uh, technical problems to apply it by uh, our, our engine when it has been already uh, able to do the, the filtering job a few years ago. Uh, some other reasons, we, uh, Freebase have a lot of ports, uh, I can easily use Freebase on my workstation, that's a good reason to, to, to use it. Uh, we can have uh, our working station at, uh, at work to which use ex the exact same operating system as our appliance. I'm not sure if that's, if that's also true for other, some other BSD based system, well at least for me. And, um, <coughs> When one BSD is supported by third parties, most of the time it is free BSD. And in fact, I don't remember one third party provider that told us, that, that told us well, you should uh, switch to Net or OpenBSD because that's the one we support. I just don't remember one single situation where, when we heard that. Uh, of course, the world is not perfect. First drawback, people know Linux. BSD, what that? Uh, and uh, some people are more important for us than others. That's sometimes an issue. Uh, product managers at uh, NetAsk have to answer uh, w at least once or twice a year to shareholders uh, uh, to explain again why we are not switching to Linux. Well, it will be either now with the GPL version 3. So uh, we also have some driver issues. Um, most important issue is uh, actually is related to hardware web support. Uh, I also have some minor issues, but yeah, I know it will be solved with the FreeBSD 7 version. Uh, so of course, some third party only support Linux. Well, some other just support Windows, but usually we, we don't have to deal with them. Uh, so we're still using FreeBSD 4. Why? Uh, first problem we, encode, we, we got when uh, trying to switch to, well, actually we tried first to switch to FreeBSD 5. <coughs> we, we weren't ready um, uh, fast enough to release a version with FreeBSD 5. Then we continued switching directly to FreeBSD 6. One of the first problems we encountered, we, we got, is that uh, of uh, system file starboard is 25% uh, percent bigger. And uh, remember, we have uh, uh, free available space issues on our low end product. So 25% increase is an issue for us. That's the reason why we started to have a look at other uh, uh, compression algorithm on products. We had some uh, network performance issues. Uh, first test we did uh, with the FreeBSD 5 and 6 showed, well, almost the same value, but in performance loss. That was still a, a problem. Most of them looks to be related to pooling. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Of course, everybody in the kernel had to switch for locking system for another. Our uh, prevention engine is in the kernel. So we had to do the same thing. We experienced experience some uh, crashes in uh, all versions. I guess most of them are solved, uh, are solved to, uh, today, but we, we can uh, keep one or two guys if needed uh, and not leave until everything is, is fixed. <coughs> of course, some of our patch needs to be, to be updated or to be completely changed for a few of them. Uh, we also had some uh, safe core uh, issue uh, and it is really difficult to debug kernel with you when you cannot have the safe core and you, when you cannot run uh, KGDB. Well, even when we you can run it, it's not always easy. And uh, I had a last problem. Damn, there is one person which is not here actually. That's the one I wanted to see. Uh, <laughs> So, <laughs> I have a problem with Geom. Remember, we use a specific init to update our products. Uh, that uh, that's, uh, update init starts, forks to keep the PID1 uh, doing as less stuff as possible. So the PID2 uh, starts by uh, upgrading things. Of course, to upgrade, to upgrade the file system, you need to remount it with write. Well, at least I did not find any other solution. Uh, when it's done, 
my first idea was to do well, was to say yeah, well, okay, I want to be as close as possible as the normal init. So my, my idea was to remount the file system with only. It works. With FreeBSD4, it works. Well, great. And uh, then I, uh, I also added uh, that to uh, our working branch using FreeBSD6. It also works, but uh, sometime after doing the boot, uh, we see that um, uh, FSCK just uh, claims about device which is mounted with write. It is mounted with only. I added some debug, some, uh, some touch on file system just before ju and just after the, the FSAK. Uh, the, the file system is mounted with only, but uh, FSAK claims it's mounted with write. I send a mail to uh, G uh, Geom uh, mailing list. Uh, is there a bug in that? The, the only answer I got, uh, the most important, interesting answer I got is uh, yeah, there's a bug. Geom is in the kernel. And actually, I still not have a solution for that. So, don't worry, FreeBSD uh, 6 is great. <laughs> First, because it's maintained. We need that, of course. And that's an issue. We'll see that later. We have security fix, we have hardware support, more hardware support than in FreeBSD 4. We have uh, ports, some ports don't work anymore in, in FreeBSD 4. We have a better, better SMP support, one we already know that it will be even better in FreeBSD 7. Our first bench are very interesting for that. There are lots of other interesting things in FreeBSD 6. We just don't care for our appliance, but some are very important for our workstations. Uh, so, we have also some waste conditions. Support for FreeBSD version is almost one uh, year. I just heard that yesterday at, uh, in the next room, in the, the other room. Uh, we release a major version, sometimes like each year. Well, that's what we would like to do. Uh, sometimes it's faster, sometimes slower. Uh, during such, uh, such uh, duration, we spend few time to upgrade, for, to do uh, minor upgrade from um, for example, when we switched to FreeBSD 4.10 to 4.11, it took us not so much time. So that's good. We can do such, swi such switches quite, uh, quite easily. Uh, doing upgrade for major, major version takes a lot of time. Actually, it will have took uh, us more than two years to move from 4 to 6. Well, okay, that's not two years of full work for everyone. But that's uh, still a lot of time. Uh, I just heard that FreeBSD 6.2 or uh, on dot three will uh, come to end of life next year. Next year, that's when we will release when when we will release our major version using that uh, such versions. So uh, that's uh, that's a problem. We still have, we will still need to maintain uh, to backport some patch some problems. Sometimes it's easy to to switch to the minor version switch uh, some weeks before we release, uh, but that's not always easy. We do some heavy qualification process, and such process take time. We cannot every uh, every time uh, uh, delay our release to to change versions. Sometimes we need to release. I have no real solution actually, except uh, doing some uh, backports. A few examples of what we did and what we will probably do in the future. Uh, first, why? Because it's fair, of course, that the answer we, you all expect, but that's not the answer I can say to my shareholders. They don't care about that. The real uh, answer is because it's more easy to do not have to maintain our patches. Uh, when we update, uh, when we do uh, project updates, the last patch we have, the most, it is, the most easy it is. Some code which is in the public project is known by everybody and is taken in consideration with other works on the project. When uh, you are the only one who knows your code, other, other guy will uh, completely break it during uh, the next version and will just not know that they did that. 
Uh, another, another reason is because we can have uh, some feedback, bug, bug reports, improved version, some, more, some other things. The last version, well, at least for some of us, is to become some kind of member of the community. That's complex, uh, I'll talk about that later. What, uh, how can we contribute? Of course, maintaining project, doing some program reports, patch, features, that's the most easy and most visible way to, to, to provide things. There's another important thing we do. Okay, uh, I started a little bit later. <laughs> Uh, being there, the web deacon is also uh, some kind of uh, support. And uh, I wrote that uh, as a joke uh, when I created the slide. But uh, yesterday evening, I had a very interesting dis uh, discussion with some BSD developer. And it is really, you can stand up for <laughs> joy if you want. Uh, it is more easy to to understand people and to help people, people understand, understanding you when you talk about, uh, around the beer or, or water um, than, uh, by, uh, than, than when you talk by mail with people you never met uh, in the real life. Uh, we could do documentation, let's talk to something else. We also are doing some benchmark. We also, are, we also provide some feedbacks. Benchmark can be interesting because we have the needed hardware to do such things. We need to do such benchmark for each new product version. So most of the time, it's quite, it's quite, quite fast for us to add a standard FreeBSD benchmark of the same, uh, of the same thing. We can talk about BSDs uh, to help people, including our shareholders, to know that uh, no, there's not, uh, not only Linux and Windows in the life, uh, there are also some other things. There are some things we, not we are not contributing. Why? Because that's internal stuff. I guess no one wants to have a patch that uh, adds uh, Netask logs to uh, public products. You don't care about that. Uh, Nobody is interesting is just having a hard way, uh, hard way to configure things. And uh, well, we do not contribute ASQ for now. Uh, sometimes uh, we do not contribute things because uh, we are not sure it's interesting to contribute from other regions. Of course, we avoid, we avoid as much as possible well ugly acts. And uh, I hope we didn't have to do such acts in, uh, since years. I hope so. Uh, but sometimes a patch is just good enough for us because we, kn we have some limitation. We know what our customers are doing with the products. We know what we, what we ensure our products do and what we ensure that they are not doing. So sometimes it's easy to patch for our specific usage, but it's more complex to patch in the more general usage. Uh, more general usage. Sometimes we don't contribute because we just don't have time to. Uh, just a few words about NetDesk and IPSec tools. We used uh, Raccoon uh, uh, for years, but uh, older version uh, really lacks a few to st stability and uh, well, really lacks a lot of things. We need to do a lot of work, which I did uh, over the year. IPSec tools fork was far more reactive. Well, in fact, it was reactive. Uh, so some patch were quickly reported, and uh, as I already had a spy uh, in the place, uh, we, I got the commit bit since late uh, to, uh, 2K4, and I'm now a BSD, uh, NetBSD developer since uh, IPSec tools is hosted on NetBSD for a year. Some uh, few examples of past contributions. Uh, well, that's not the most important because it's done. Uh, bug fixing, that's most uh, bug fixing on the release engineering is the most important because that's project life. Other things are feature we needed, so I would have done then, anyways. But bug fixing, release engineering, uh, and yes, con uh, auditing and the reporting contributors patch. That's uh, that's a lot of stuff. Other things are not very really interesting. But I accepted that one for uh, FreeBSD the, the 7.0 users. Uh, I am a member of the team. Why is it interesting? First, because I get security report before everyone else. We are working with security appliance. That is really important. Of course, uh, that's also difficult because I, I've, I have to deal with other people who want also the patch quickly. That's something to deal with, but that's an easy way to, to do that. I am the first one to get information. That's great. Of course, it's more easy to report my work. 
on a patch that is committed to the public uh, version is a patch that I won't have to maintain for Netask anymore. Well, of course, if there are bugs or other things, I'll have to work on that, but I won't have to just work on a patch that don't apply anymore. That's more interesting. Of course, it needs, of it needs some time to do that. Uh, and uh, some people already asked me if you, I would do some direct uh, contribution to NetBSD. Uh, according to menu from NetBSD project, I already contribute to that. Uh, I consider I must contribute to IPSec tools. Well, that's our start NetBSD. That's a part of the NetBSD project. That's true and false. Uh, I hope I'll have time to work uh, on, also work on NetBSD's uh, IPSec stack. Some past contribution to FreeBSD. Uh, FreeBSD support of IPSec tools, I'm, I'm the maintainer of that port. Some patch to IPSec stack. Uh, some of them will need to, to have more, uh, look more closer about that. Uh, well, that are some past contributions. That, uh, some other uh, contribution to, to some other parts of kernel that are not only my contributions, that I, uh, those are Netas contributions. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, no, it's not on that slide. Uh, and a few other things. Uh, expected future contributions. Of course, I continue working on IPSec. Uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk about not traversal in a few slides. Uh, some ish, another issue, George, uh, I think George saw that on a high number of uh, SPDS ID entries. Feedback on fast IPSec, now we use it and now we are, we'll have customers on the qualification team which use it. Feedbacks on network performance. Uh, we have the needed hardware to do such bench. And uh, we'll talk about uh, pooling system in a few slides. Uh, hopes of some uh, problem reports for ports. And I hope some other, other things. I still don't have an hour. <laughs> yeah, well, the next time. <laughs> Can I just finish very, very quickly? Uh, IPSec, so we'll talk uh, on a private discussion about that. Uh, there are a lot of problems with that. <laughs> uh, just an information, uh, there's an SPD catch uh, code in the FreeBSD 6. Uh, it doesn't seem to work. Uh, we did uh, some uh, bench with and without it. It's the same, so we'll have to do things with that. Uh, pull next generation. Fabien is here who worked on that. So there's a mail on the mailing list. Uh, you can see all sorts of information on the mailing list. Uh, you can see the architecture, so Fabien will explain that to you, if for those who are interested. I would just like to spend uh, two minutes, I guess, two minutes on uh, Nat. I started at, at uh, quarter past uh, ten, please. <laughs> uh, Nat traversal suppose. So. The, the information is that uh, pa first patch was provided some years ago on the FreeBSD is actually the only uh, uh, operating system that not provide uh, NAT traversal support since years. Uh, I told you that with uh, George yesterday and we noticed that in fact this may be just uh, a delayed X issue uh, for most of the time. So we'll work on that. Some social engineering. Uh, what's mine uh, of contributors? Most of the time, I'll, spend the, I'll do that tomorrow. It's not so simple. Commuters uh, mind. Of course, it's more interesting to work on our, on our job. Of course, I'll have a look at it tomorrow. I am also the maintainer of uh, projects, so I know what that. Uh, contributor contracts. Most of the time, it's just available time. And sometimes it's memory. Uh, commuters constraints are exactly the same. We have extra uh, uh, context. Sometimes, as an employee, I can spend uh, quite all the time I want. Sometimes, I just can't spend no work time. And some things I can switch from one, one uh, situation to the other. So, I have the same problem. Time. Uh, most of the time, problem is related to time. Even some of, the, of us may have social life. Uh, we can punch day to have uh, 48 hours. So. Sometimes we just have communication problem. I think we all, you do not, I do not, we all need to improve things and faster things. Uh, keep an easy track of problems. 
I, my, one of my mistakes was probably to not do a problem report at the beginning of my traversal patch. Uh, find an easy way to tell I don't have time. We all have that problem. A uh, few years ago at BSDCon, there was a question, is it time to, do, we need, do you need, well, I'm not a member of uh, one of, of uh, BSD projects, uh, well, not that one, is it, uh, the time, we, do we need to, uh, to grow up community? I don't know what was the answer, and I'm not sure the answer would be no today. Another <laughs> solution would be something I often do on IPSEC tools is to commit, but be disabled by default. I just ensure that when it's disabled, it does not break anything, and uh, I want people that we did not test that. Uh, please avoid moving to a Linux style development. Linux does that well. <laughs> My conclusion, I'm quite on time. It's possible to make business with BSDs. It's possible to make a security device from a BSD, of course. It's possible to do business and contribute. That's interesting. But some things will need to be improved, I hope, I guess. And I think we will all take benefits of such improvement. Uh, BSD projects will take benefits because we, they will have more manpower. That was asked a few minutes ago. Well, an hour ago now. Uh, we will uh, gain from that because uh, it, it will make our job much faster, much simpler. Uh, and I don't like wasting time maintaining one patch where, 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 when I can spend that time doing other things. I guess uh, committers don't want to spend uh, time uh, just checking that, that patch which uh, is uh, talked about for years has just changed one minor things. I guess you also want to, to work on other interesting, thing, interesting things and I really guess we actually all waste time which would be spent in a more efficient way. So uh, I guess question will be done out of the room. Uh, I already knew that I wouldn't have time for that. Is there just one fast question on which I could answer quickly? <laughs> no, it looked like nobody has asked questions. No. <laughs> Thank you.